Hello and welcome. The other night at the end of the stream, Ryan and I had some really good discussions about Gran Turismo Sport, including our thoughts on how the game is going as we approach the one year anniversary, as well as potential future DLC. I thought it was too interesting not to share, so I didn't just want to leave it at the end of a stream where nobody would find it. I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section. Please enjoy. Well, one significant patch and then another patch only a week later. Look, full credit to Polyphony Digital. Um, not even joking when I say this. We all give them a very, very hard time. I think all game players give uh, the developers a very hard time. And that's okay. You can keep them honest. Um, keep them working hard. But I have to give them... Uh, a nod on this one. I tip my hat to them because just one week after they released uh, a pretty big car and that's probably what motivated them. I mean the, this Formula 1 car, it's so cool that this is in the game and the car feels great to drive. Like I just did a race then and yeah the last three laps I wasn't really concentrating and made a few mistakes but in the early stages when I was concentrating the car felt great. It really did. Um, you need to get your head around how to drive it in slow corners but that's that's a problem with my me, not the car. Um, it's just a learning thing. Yep. The, the car ultimately feels fantastic, and I'm really stoked that it's uh, in the game. Uh, it's a big deal for Polyphonic Digital to add that in. I bet that's a lot of money was spent getting that because they would have had to have not only purchased the licensing of Mercedes uh, as well as um, you know the sponsors and that sort of thing. They would also have had to purchase a license for that car, I would imagine, off Codemasters, who currently hold... Um, all rights to the Formula One cars, obviously with their uh, yearly Formula One releases. So I'd imagine this is pretty expensive, and this car that we've just enjoyed there, that may well be the reason why um, there's no Spa. Yeah, if, if in Spa the rumour is that they're complaining the cost is too much, the licensing cost is too much, the reason they may be a little bit uh, lean on the, on the green side of the balance sheet could well be because they had to pay for this car. But um, do you want to know something though? All right, let's mm. get into the big thick and the the crux of it. Uh, if PD released one single update with the Formula One Mercedes car and Spa and charged ten dollars, every freaking bastard would have bought it. That's that's true. That is absolutely true. Um, I don't think at this point. Let's be honest. We're nearly twelve months down. Um, I know we're not there yet. It's I think it was October, off, off the top of my head, this game re released. Uh, we're not at the 12-month point yet. I, I understand that. But at the same time, we are a long way through its life cycle. The casual people that just bought this game at the start to just have a mark around, they've gone. Most of those yeah. casuals oh, have long oh, gone. The people that are left here, um, I think the people that are left here would be willing to drop, drop a tenner on a track and a car that they want and love. They've already given us the F1 car for free. I, I think that's pretty cool. I did a review of Gran Turismo Sports on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go and find that. I did that in the early stage. One of my biggest complaints about the game was the fact that, um, that it was a bit lean on content. It was, you know, there wasn't a lot of tracks. There wasn't that many cool cars at the time. And when you compared it to its peers... Uh, like your Project Car 2, which I think is probably, let's be honest, um, given that Falls is not on the PlayStation, Project Cars 2 has got to be the biggest rival for Gran Turismo. Um, I think a Seto Corsa is a little bit more niche. That's probably probably aiming at different people. It's a little bit more of a simulator, or a lot more of a simulator, than Gran Turismo and Project Cars, but those two games land on about the same level. And when Gran Turismo Sport launched, uh, Project Cars 2 just had so much more content. Um, but to their credit, they have released something like 50-odd cars, maybe more. Um, maths is really hard. They've done 50-odd cars, let's say 50-plus, um, what, got to be six tracks, and that's not including track variances, if you include them as separate tracks. Um, but yes, to Polyphony Digital's credit, just, just to finish off on this topic, they have added in um, so many cars and tracks for free, uh, yeah. as well as they have been improving the game. They've constantly been working on the penalty system. Now, whether you love it or hate it, as far as I'm concerned, it's in a much better position now than it was... At, at other previous stages uh, and they just keep working on it they keep you know trying new things some work some don't uh, they've they've dropped back to a weekly thing uh, that's you know to be honest it doesn't irritate me that much because I don't play Grand Turismo daily I probably play it twice a week those by the way those tires I don't know if anyone's watching this replay those tires 
there's something wrong with the textures on them. They look weird. Um, mm. I don't know if you're noticing that as well, but yeah, yeah there's odd textures there. But um, anyway. Shader error or something. Yeah, yeah. Something, something going on. Um, but to their credit, I think Gran Turismo now is has got enough content that you don't need to compare to Project Cars and go, oh, there's so much more. Yeah, Project Cars has still got weather and stuff like that, but also it doesn't have the, the deep online matchmaking system that Gran Turismo has. It doesn't have the events, the FIA events. So there are pros and cons, and at the moment, um, the, the reality is I've only paid one price for Gran Turismo Sport. Um, I've never paid any more dollars at all. I could have been lazy and just bought um, the Lewis Hamilton version of the F1 car. If you watched last night's video on my channel, um, you'll see that I ground out about eight Blue Moon Bay Speedway races to buy it again. Uh, but I could have just bought it, but I haven't, which means the only money I've ever spent on Gran Turismo Sport is the money I spent initially. Now, Project Cars, any new content they've put out, as far as I'm aware, have been in the, in the forms of paid DLC. I think at this point, especially after 12 months of free updates and giving us enough content now to call this a, a, a meaty game, um, I think I'd be more than happy to chuck a tenner, 15 bucks for a, for a track and cars that we want. And given that the casuals are gone and you're more hardcore people that play this game, I think most people are going to buy a DLC. I just do. Yeah. I mean, every you'll get absolutely everyone having a whinge about it. Look at how many people have whinged about the optional microtransactions. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't have to you buy these cars, as you said yourself just then. You just ground out and bought the Formula One car yourself. Exactly. Or you could have just gone on there and bought the microchip. It's up to you how you want to do that. That's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, if if they were hiding stuff behind a DLC that you could only get it if you paid it, that's or, or a, a microtransaction. Bit you mean? No, no, no. I'm talking about actual DLC. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've so seen putting a actually, paywall up. Yeah, yeah. Putting it, putting a paywall up where you couldn't get contact because of a paywall. Yeah, you know, have a whinge about that. But yeah. you can't whinge about a bloody optional microtransaction. Yeah. Um, but, and given the yeah. way the BOP works in this game, there is no like I, I saw a couple of channels like I think Yong Yeah, who's actually pretty good at gaming news, like he's not a bad channel to follow if you if you follow that. Um, he complained that they're you know. They said there was going to be no microtransactions. There now are, and he was sort of saying the best cars in the game are, are hidden behind microtransactions. That's utter rubbish, and anyone that plays Gran Turismo will know that. Um, sure, you can say, well, look, I don't have enough money um, to go out and buy the new Ford GT GR3 car, and whilst that probably has a few bouncing issues at the moment, they have just nerfed it slightly, but arguably it may not be enough. Um, with this this patch here today, they I think they took the power down by 1%. Um, but anyway, the, the point is, there's BOP. It doesn't matter what car you buy within the category, um, you're going to be competitive. Yeah. So it's, uh -huh. they're not hiding the best cars. Even if they released, say, what car's not in it? The Bentley. Let's say they released the Bentley GR3, but you could only get that car. You couldn't grind for the car. You could only get the car behind um, a microtransaction, five bucks or whatever for the car. Welcome to iRacing World, by the way. But even if they did that, okay, I can kind of understand some people would be like, I want to try this car and I have to pay for it. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, if you want to try just about anything in life, you generally have to pay for it. Um, at this life cycle of the game, I think that's okay. And unless the Bentley is just OP and everyone that buys the Bentley is just winning all the GR3 races because the car is so much better, then that is rubbish. That is something that I would happily but object at, to at the same time though like I, I can completely understand people uh, whinging about things being behind a paywall like that's that's fine if they if they want to do that and they want to whinge that's fine everyone does that on a daily basis just about pretty much everything in the whole freaking world yeah correct um, but yeah you can't you can't sort of have a whinge about optional stuff and um you know, saying that something's hidden behind a paywall just because you can't be bothered doing the work to get the money like yeah. that's not and as long that as it's a matter. reasonable grind as well. Like, the yeah. thing is, like, one thing to remember, you cannot buy any of the 20 million cars. Any of the cars worth 20 million in this game, you can't buy them with a microtransaction. Um, 2 million is the maximum, as far as I'm yeah. aware. And if I'm wrong, please let me know. I but, think that's the best <laughs> Yeah, but you can't do that at the moment. Uh, so it, it still adds that exclusivity. And if you don't want to grind for it, you don't get it. Like, even if I've got my big fat wallet out here ready to pay for whatever I have to, and thanks for the sub, Chin Ho Wong. Um, as, as, you know, 
if I don't want to grind for it, I don't get it. But not as anyone else. Not as the guy with the fat wallet sitting there ready to throw money at the screen. Um, yeah. So that's okay. You know, it, it's exclusive. I, it kind of pisses me off because they're exclusive cars in real life. You'll never get to drive or have one. I kind of want to experience that in a video game. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. they've found a way to make these cars exclusive, even in, even in the game. You know what the life. funny thing is, though? Like, it's in a game. I don't, I don't care about absolutely any aspect of the car in the game. Like, if I saw one of those cars in real life, my jaw would hit the ground and I would just drool over every inch of it yeah and then when they sound uh, started the thing up i'd probably come in my pants but <laughs> it's in, in a game it's like this it, it means nothing so i don't understand that exclusivity part of it no me either and as i say I, I don't think that should be that expensive i think they should be thanks for the sub there Graham. um i don't think that should be as exclusive as that either uh, but yeah. anyway they it is what it is and at least this, this, to it. their credit they haven't said yeah okay chuck us a tanner though and you can have one um, yeah. They're like, no, I don't care how much money you've got, mate. You, you still have to grind like every other bastard here does to get these exclusive cars. So, um, and then it's it's up to me if I want to sit there over three nights grinding Blue Moon Bay Speedway, um, I'll end up with twenty million. I mean, it took me what eight races to get two million, and that was coming from I had nothing in the kitty. I had like forty grand or something in the kitty. Um, I was going to say, just got rid of it all buying this Formula One. I, I did, yeah. Um, so obviously you can extrapolate that out yourself and if you do daily races and other events you can grind 20 million plenty of people have there is no shortage of people with a lot of cash in the kitty um yep. if you want to buy it it's accessible it's not like some of the free-to-play games you see people whinge about because you, you've got to put in 300 hours of grinding to get one thing um that's yep. not the case here it wouldn't take you you know wouldn't take you that long yeah, it would take you a while. There's a bit of grinding. It wouldn't take you that long to get one. Now, if you want to buy all four or five um, of the... Because I think there must be at least four cars now worth $20 million. I think um, so, yeah. That Okay, sure. That's going to take a long time. And maybe, I, as, I, as I said before, I still don't agree that their pricing's right. I think it's set too high. Um, Even maybe, if it was $10 million, that's still a big, that's yeah. still a big grind. It is still a big grind just to get um, the, the forty million required for that, but I will, I will say just quickly backing up because you sort of yeah please 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 to the point. yeah um, on on the topic of would we be prepared to pay for a DLC you know if they put together a track like Spa and a Formula One car like this if it's, if instead of being it for free I have zero interest in buying this Formula One car and even if you gave it to me for free I'd probably still never even race it because I just don't care. But if you gave me a $10 DLC with this car and Spa, I would pay for it. Yeah, because you want Hands the track. Hands down, no worries, because I want the track. That's it. That's it. I mean, uh, I, I do want this car, and I would pay for this car. Um, yeah. And it's awesome, by the way. If you're just joining this stream very, very late on, and you're wondering what's going on, this car feels kick-ass now. They have fixed the uh, decelerating braking issue, so get yeah, on that let, shit. Let, let me clarify as well. I don't want this car because I don't really care about Formula 1. Not because no. it's crap. No, it's, and you're just some big fan of high downforce open wheelers. But it's I would 100... Close. If they, on their first birthday, said, we are bringing out a DLC, it's even, like, every other game's charging 25 bucks Australian for a DLC. Oh, sure. You can convert that to your local currency yourself, but that's they're charging 20 to 25 bucks for a DLC. If they put a handful of tracks and a couple of awesome cars... I'm, I'm buying that. Like, it's yeah. been one year. I've never spent another dime on this game. Uh, yeah, And, I, and they've in. basically doubled the content. Yeah, they have. Uh, they they, yeah, they so. basically have doubled the content. I mean, not exactly, but, you know, really, yeah. they've added a lot for nothing. So um, to answer the initial question, how's this for a 20-minute segue? Yes. <laughs> we would yeah. buy a DLC right now and would not even whinge about it. Probably be excited yeah. about it if it contained yeah. good stuff. For sure. Because there are a lot of things in this that would make this game so much better if we had a couple of more, of like, even if you had two more real tracks, Silverstone and Spa, done, no worries. Yep. And then throw in two fake ones. I don't care. Make them up. See, I don't, I, whatever. Some of the bloody made-up ones are actually really good. Yeah, well, this last one that's come out um, has been very, very well received by the community. Very well received. I've not even seen it yet so. <laughs> yeah it's look it's not bad like for me it's probably a little bit bland um like they've but yeah otherwise it, it's cool it is a good track there's a couple of different yeah. variations it's a good thing like, it's a hundred percent a positive addition to gran turismo um and it's going to be a lot of people's one of their favorite tracks i'd imagine 
by the time they yeah. finish with all this. So that's cool, the fact that they've done that with the, with the made up track. Finally, make sure you do join in on the very social upgrades. We're always having good chats over on Discord, so get on board that. Um, Facebook's there, my Instagram's there, Twitter's there. Get on board all that shit. It's all fantastic. If you don't know where the links are, you can see them down the bottom right hand corner of the screen at www.charlieroscoe.com. Dot com. But nonetheless, thank you all very much for watching, and we will talk to you soon in another stream. We'll have some open lobbies. We'll probably do another Formula One open lobby. Let's do a Mazda 787B lobby for sure. Uh, let's try this new track, get Ryan behind the wheel as well, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, but for now, it is goodbye.